The UFC opened the women's bantamweight division shortly after Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate had their first fight in Strike Force, which was absolved by the UFC later on. Ronda went on the offensive to build the fight, and Misha responded, but she wasn't as aggressive in the lead up. The fight was violent. One thing you have to give Ronda and Misha is their propensity for violence when in the cage. Well, octagon. Ronda nearly ripped Tate's arm off, and though in this sport we use a lot of hyperbole, that near arm rip was quite literal. When Kat Zingano got injured, it left the UFC with a golden opportunity to place Misha Tate as the coach opposing Ronda in the 18th season of The Ultimate Fighter. Ronda was competitive throughout on a level not seen by most people in the world. She wasn't letting up for a minute, literally. Cat! Come on in, guys. Six o'clock, you know the schedule. You should get here earlier if you want to stay later. Ronda's already getting on my nerves and my team's nerves. It, it's really stupid that she's barging in like right at six o'clock. Her team's not even on the mat and she's already trying to boot us out of there. It doesn't even make any sense, but it's just kind of typical Ronda. Get ripped, but smushed. Red Rock was awesome. I was sitting watching the fights when I looked over and I seen Misha, Rhonda, and Caraway at the bar. Can you please move away from my boyfriend? I'm really not sitting near your boyfriend. I don't think anyone with half a brain would desire a man like that. You don't even know how to hit pads, are you kidding me? I don't know how to hit pads. You don't even know how to throw punches. Rhonda is so competitive that she says hateful things just to get a one-up. She insults people to devalue them, and did so to Misha and her team non-stop. The UFC's debut women's bantamweight fight was with Liz Carmouche though, not Misha Tate. Misha has gone on record to express her frustrations with the situation, and it only added to the animosity between the two. In the eventual rematch, Misha did way better. In fact, she did better than anyone else against Rhonda up until that point. Yo, Misha Misha can crack, and she cracked the shit out of Ronda's jaw a few times, but Ronda's Uchimata and armbar technique is just Jedi level. I believe she would have a lot of success with it today upon re-watching all this shit. Kinda like Habib, you know what's coming, but what the fuck you gonna do about it? This rematch happened after Tough 18, and the season itself is just wild to look back at. Organization would put on Juliana versus Shayna. That would never. That would never happen. Yeah. Ever. It would never happen. Yeah, it's that true. That wouldn't be an option as an opponent for either of us to have. No. I'm fighting Shayna Baszler. When I very first went to a huge Strike Force card, she was there fighting on it, and she gave me her fight shirt, and I took pictures with her, and I already knew who she was when I saw her, so I was like totally like honored, you know, and I was like, well, that's Shayna Baszler, you know. I can't even think of what they would tell her. Any, uh, stay standing, I'll still beat her up. Clinch up with her, I'll still beat her up. Take her to the ground, I'll still beat her up. I've been doing this for over a decade. And she's not the one, guys. She's not the one to put the stamp at the end of that. A lot of the girls that are already signed in the UFC, I'm ranked higher than some of them, you know? Like, I don't know why I kept getting passed up. I don't know why. Shayna Baszler should have been a star before this season was even a thing. I remember getting into jiu-jitsu after seeing the unique grappling to Shayna. She was fighting a fucking decade before this show, fighting in some venues that look like a Lionheart set piece. Shayna is based in saying she doesn't know why she keeps getting passed up. This is her entire career. She was right in saying that Juliana wasn't the one to end it, and it sucks that Amanda Nunes was her final fight in the UFC. Now she is in the W. WWE still being overlooked by management, and Ronda thankfully is trying to change that in a current lead program. It's total bullshit, because Shayna, in my opinion, outside of maybe Adam Cole, was the most dominant champion in Triple H's NXT. She was the most exciting, and she played into her character with flawless execution. The beginning of my career was fights where it was like in a warehouse and it was standing there, no chairs, no bleachers. Go. I fought where the top payday was a $300 cash under the table. Like, it was really frustrating. I've spent so much time just busting my tail. I wish there was some way I could, like, Vulcan mind meld to you people. The road, the long road it's been for us. The fights we've put on, the epic battles you've missed just because it wasn't on the UFC. 
Like now it's finally here. Coaching's tough, man. It's like ripping your heart out of your chest and letting it run around without you. I wish I could take everything that Shane is feeling and just feel it myself right now. Terrible. It's like over 11 years, man. Here it was. You know what? This isn't the end of it. Everyone's seen you and everyone knows you. Oh, I'm like three times the fighter she is. I don't know what the f happened. Man. That's out of your control now. Whatever just happened is out of your control. And when I looked across and I saw Shayna just hurting like that, and I looked over and I saw Misha just smiling at her pain, and she's gonna pay for every smile she smirks today. This is the beginning of a lifelong friendship. You have to give Rhonda credit for her high level of empathy, and you have to give credit for how competitive Rhonda is, even when it isn't her competing. Just let you know, you smiling at my girl's pain today is one more reason I'm gonna destroy you again. Smiling at your girl's pain? Shane is my friend. Now, I'm not saying Rhonda and Shayna's friendship isn't legit. Of course it is. It very much is. But I think the moment Misha said, Shayna's my friend, Rhonda's competitive trigger was pulled. I think she said to herself something like, she might be your friend, but I'm gonna be a better one to her. Fuck your friendship. And that's exactly what the rowdy one did. Amazing. I'll send you this. Exactly. Very good. I fought Roxanne in Japan eight years ago, and I was terrified. I took the fight on short notice and she was that was when she was at the top of the top let's try it again with feeling sogo kakutogi wa tanoshii desu your turn sogo kakutogi wa tanoshii desu very good high five exclamation point mm. i won and in such roxanne fashion we left the venue together and she showed me all around tokyo and she told me that she really hopes that me beating her gave my name the push that it needed to be famous. I remember her saying that to me. I'm good, I'm good. Okay? Yeah, just leave me, please. Okay. Say no. <laughs> <sighs> Roxanne Mataferi is a soul I wish could be replicated. I believe nobody can make a video like this without feeling for Roxanne and Shayna. We almost never see Roxanne break the happy warrior vibe. She tells Misha she's all good and she sees Shayna and just falls apart. Dude, it's hard to watch. If you don't get the feels from it, I don't know who you are. These two deserve way more than what they have received from the promotions and the MMA community. That feeling, that devastating feeling of a golden carrot being swiped away. These two fought each other eight fucking years before this goddamn season. The story is just incredible. Though I'm sure UFC did something cool for Roxanne, I hope. Casey O'Neill didn't give a fuck, that sucked. Let's not forget she beat Macy Barber before that, someone who was relatively fresh and relevant in the division. So let me just give at least one more thank you to these two ladies. Thank you, Queen of Spades and Happy Warrior. There is no Rhonda, no Amanda, and sure as fuck, no Juliana without them. More than anyone in the house right now, I know what she's feeling. It's like 11, 11, 12 years of work. And you just want the world to know that you're one of the best because she really is. And uh, uh, Roxanne truly, truly is one of the pioneers. <laughs> Likes a rat. That's, that's a fact. Because you're messing with my livelihood, right? Like, this is my livelihood. I, I don't know, like, honestly, like, what I'm doing that's, like, so, like, harmful, you know? It's like... Roxanne will socialize with her a little bit. Like, I don't know. You're not my girlfriend. If my girlfriend sees this, then she's going to be mad that I'm talking to you, so uh, now I'm going to be rude to you, you know? I don't <laughs> like, know about that. The way that you are here and here is the way how you are as a real person, you know? So if they're nasty to me, then I just assume that they're just nasty people. For the entire house to not like Juliana speaks volumes. What the individual reasoning is can vary, sure. But how do you get an entire house to not like you? Back then, there were not a lot of girly girl fighters, and maybe that's a part of it. Maybe she made dudes uneasy because they aren't used to training with girly girls or girls at all. This season has a lot of these themes included, but this video isn't focusing on all that. One person she really rubbed the wrong way, 
is number two ranked bantamweight Raquel Pennington. Is it true it all started because you were like rustling through the, the bags and blow drying your hair while she was trying to sleep? Is that the seed? It seems every morning that I'm sleeping, all I hear is Juliana blow drying her hair and working on her makeup. Her zippers on her bags being open like crazy. Sitting there playing with vitamin bottles, just shaking them all crazy. It's been frustrating. Coming in, banging around, being like, oh, getting into bed, being like, you you're so loud, you're so loud. This is your ass over here. Let me show you. No. This is you. You're like, what pill do I need today? <laughs> hold on, I need another one. Hold on, I need this one. Hold on. Oh, hold on, let me put some back. Oh, hold on, I need one more. That is and not then you're true. Like, you give me some Velcro. Liar. No. I'm sorry you went to bed late and that you are dragging ass in the morning and I'm taking my vitamins and that we live in the same room. You know, I don't know what they expect me to do. I don't know what they want me to do. Whatever, you guys are a bunch of haters. That's all you do is run your mouth, and then you want to say, I want the camera time, and I'm soaking up the camera time, and all this stuff. Nah. They're pushing me, man. They're pushing my buttons. Like, I, I'm really starting to feel like a animal in the corner right now. He puts baby in the corner. I'm about to lash out, seriously, on everyone. On everyone. Ugh. She's a head case sometimes. Ugh. Dumb broads in this house. <laughs> Yo, how the fuck can you not want to see this fight? Media keeps trying so hard to skip over Raquel, making lies up about Ronda, bringing up Valentina's loser ass, bringing up Aaron Blanchfield. What about anyone except Raquel? Why? If some of you think Ronda can come back and beat everyone ranked, what difference does it make? All that means is that you view women's bantamweight as boring and non-consequential. What are you watching for? To see hot chicks? To see lame-ass, pathetic victory twerks? I don't give a fuck about any of that. Plenty of sights to see that with plenty of hot chicks. Some of them even host MMA fighter content, if that's your thing. I'm here for stories, lore, and elite competition. If you don't think Juliana and Raquel is an elite fight, fine. But it's an incredible incredible decade-long story that involves other stories going as far back as 25 fucking years. Raquel ended up losing in the semifinals on Tough 18, but it's worth noting she was injured during training. Broken hand, fractured forearm. Juliana doesn't want to give that breathing room, but wants to give all of her injuries plenty of breathing room. She also wants to be praised for it. Even after Rocky congratulates Pena winning her semifinal bout, and even after Rocky congratulates her in doing a great job after beating Amanda in their first fight, Raquel just keeps trucking. Even though you can tell that this woman is devastated. Congratulations to Juliana for the way that she performed. She showed up and she put on the fight that she needed to, to advance. Um, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can say to it. Move into the finals with her submission victory, Juliana Pena. Thank you. I said I believed in myself. I, I said I, I'm not going to let her take my baby. And I went in there with vengeance. And I got the victory. I'm, I'm really happy. The work's not over. This is the first day of the rest of my life. And uh, I think I did good. And, and I'm, I'm really happy for myself. I'll say this in every video that I bring up Juliana from now on. I get a lot of shit for being so harsh on Pena. But this is why. Because Pena doesn't need a gimmick. She just needs to be herself. This emotion, this rawness, out of all these ladies, not just Juliana, in this season, is what gives me goosebumps. Pena continues on present day with damage control after losing her mind for Amanda Nunes. But she is giving some based thoughts. I would really like to see Pena go somewhere else for an interview outside of ESPN and dipshit Ariel. All Ariel does is give her layup after layup to lean into this shitty gimmick. That shit sucks! By the way, it keeps evolving into a worse version. She says people are talking about her in interviews, but it's because Ariel keeps interviewing these women and asking about Juliana. That's why. I can't stand the fucking crush this dude has on her. Everyone message Pena and tell her to get interviewed by someone else. Tell her to get interviewed by me. I'll get real answers to real questions. We don't need her WWEing the shit up. 
Pena is a very interesting person without the bullshit shenanigans. She doesn't give real interviews anymore. And Ariel is just mind blown by everything she says. Oh God! But the reality of the situation is, is that me and Raquel have had some uh, bad blood brewing for the last 10 years since we were on The Ultimate Fighter together. And uh, that fight's got to come first, first and foremost. Before she was eliminated from the competition, she was staying up all night till like three in the morning and drinking and having a good time with everybody else that was eliminated from the competition. So she wouldn't come to bed till like the wee hours. And then when Monday would roll around Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every single day we're training two times a day, she wouldn't come to practice. She was sleeping in because she had stayed up the night before. So in the morning time, because we're the first team to go into the gym that day, we had first practices. You know, I hope Juliana isn't just talking sideways here because that's a strong ass allegation. At least she is talking about Raquel Pennington. I love how she is focused on Raquel. I'm waking up to get my, my medicine. I'm waking up to get, you know, my bags together. I'm waking up to start my day, but she's mad about me doing that. So then she started to say that I'm like being all loud on purpose. I'm like, no, I'm not being, we're living on top of each other. We're literally took, got the smallest room with three chicks in one room. Like we're living on top of each other. And it's not my fault that you stayed up all night and that you're dragging ass in the morning and not even coming to practice. And so I, I've never forgot about that. I've never forgot about how, Horribly, she talked about me in the house and then accused me of being a brat because I wouldn't go hang out with them at nighttime while they were sitting around a campfire talking crap about me. Like, you're not my friend. And I found that out very quickly when we were living together for seven weeks. Do you think you versus Raquel is a bigger fight than you versus Myra? Um, I think that, yeah, it is because she is on a five fight win streak. And, you know, I think that that's, you know, she's been crying about getting a title shot since the last time that she quit on the stool. So it's about time for, for her to get another ass whooping, I would, I would assume. <laughs> Even though Juliana is in white, she is not innocent. She hasn't forgotten the talk, but has she forgotten that she herself can be pretty shitty? When asked and accused about leaking fights on Tough 18, she tried to turn the focus on Roxanne and blame her for leaking the fights. She tried to coax info out of Roxanne as well one morning while they're sitting at the kitchen and Roxanne being the warrior that she is wouldn't snitch and in this very interview which I'm not gonna clip the part she punches down further on Roxanne when talking about Macy Barber what the fuck it's awful she owes Roxanne another apology I mean I'm the main character and these NPCs are having a big problem with you know uh, me and when they get asked questions in their interviews all their questions are being asked about me like their whole interview they're spending their whole time talking about me by the way what did you say npc npc what is that fire fire meow hee ha yes you got me feeling like a cowgirl let me write it huh? non-playable characters you know like the people that when you go into the video wow. games and here's ariel doing his goofball dipshit again wow Get Juliana in contact with someone to give a real interview. Somebody on her team, please quit feeding her to Ariel. Somebody that will not seal clap and be a ditzy bitch like Christy Swanson's version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer before she accepted she was meant for more. Stick to darts, motherfucker. I'm tired of this fucking seal clap praise bullshit. You're not interviewing anybody. You're just bringing someone on to cheerlead or fucking argue with. Also, something isn't right in this interview. Juliana is dressed weird and the lens may be the thing throwing me off. Her mannerisms are eerily reminding me of a certain TikToker that got caught up in some Bud Light controversy. I don't get it. This Pena 3.0 fucking sucks. This is not her. She said she'd always be authentic. This ain't it. All this bravado and egocentric banter is a mask. Will the real Juliana Pena please stand up? Because your next fight is must win. No bullshit. If I don't, uh, if I don't win this fight, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be heartbroken. It'll, it'll end me. I, j I just want to win. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfucker.